So there seems to be some stuff unfolding within Hawaiian politics. So uh, of the former Hawaiian Democratic governor has called on Tulsi Gabbard to resign from her position as representative um, of a district in Hawaii. Okay, The guy's name is Neil Abercrombie. Very interesting. Sounds like the clothes store. Uh, it's his former Hawaii governor. Neil Abercrombie on Monday called on Representative Tulsi Gabbard to resign from Congress, citing her present vote on impeaching President Trump and absence from Capitol Hill due to a presidential campaign. Quote, I feel very strongly the 2nd District of Hawaii must be fully represented. Abercrombie, a Democrat who previously served in the House for nearly two decades, said. Um, Abercrombie said Gabbard should step down and allow a special election to fill their seats. Gabbard, who has served in his House since 2013, has already said she will not seek re-election to focus on a presidential campaign. Now, uh, it says, according to GovTrack, Gabbard has missed about 86% of House votes in the last three months. This is the weird thing, okay? This is Gabbard's office pushed back against Abercrombie, citing her, quote, major legislative wins for her district, including, quote, opportunities for defense contracting for native Hawaiian companies. Let me repeat that to you. Opportunities for defense contracting for native Hawaiian companies. That it seems to me like a sort of usage of the MIC is to benefit your specific district, which is very weird. I mean, I'd love to hear some more info about that. I don't know why she would... <laughs> why is that? <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard, or Tulsi, why would that be one of your successes? Are you kidding me? That's insanity. Um, her pursuit of the highest office in land has not compromised her and her team's committed commitment to serving the people in Hawaii in her fourth term in Congress. So this is really interesting, okay, because this guy is talking about how she's missing all the votes, but I was trying to look at the numbers in terms of like, let's contextualize the other candidates, okay, in terms of missing votes, okay? So I found this, uh, this is on govtrack.us basically, and, you know, it has this percentages, right? And it has a list of candidates. So this is Tulsi Gabbard's numbers, right? As of right now, she's at 81.7. And she's been, you know, hovering around the 80s for, you know, some days now. And she's even jumped into the 90s. But the thing is, if you look at, like, you know, if you look at some of these, like, if you look at, like, Amy Klobuchar, I mean, she's at basically the same number as Tulsi Gabbard is. Um... And so there are multiple, you know, there there are a multitude of these candidates. Even, like, Bernie is, like, you know, he's kind of getting up there. Um, or, sorry, that's 2016, actually. That's 2016, Bernie. But, you know, a lot of these characters, like Kamala Harris, was all the way up in the 90s and all this stuff. Now, the one thing is, is that votes in the Senate, for the most part, are useless, I guess, because most of them are judge votings, and I guess a lot of these Democrats don't have a real effect in what happens. But what it looks like to me is Tulsi Gabbard's missed percentage of the vote is not really any different from virtually anybody else. I mean, Gillibrand, you know, while she was still in the race, was all the way up to 79.7%. So, you know, again, like, none of this stuff really seems to be out of the ordinary for these candidates. Looks like Tim Ryan was a bit low. But that's because no one really cared about the guy. But to me, it seems like that's not really a rationale to use because... A lot of these numbers seem to be similar. Now, the one thing is, is there may be, like, there may be some nuance to, oh, maybe House votes are more important. And I do think that, you know, because on the day of impeachment, it was kind of expected that she wasn't even going to show up to the vote, which is like, holy smokes, that's insane. Like, you have to show up to work. Uh, but, you know, this doesn't really, this doesn't really strike me as something that's out of the ordinary. And so I think he's trying to just kind of shoo that in when pretty much all of the Democratic candidates are missing a ton of votes. So I think it's a really lame attack to do. Um, now, whether or not I think that she should resign, um, I think that she should drop out of the race. She should not endorse Bernie Sanders, just drop out of the race. And then I think that she should, you know, stay being a, a representative in the House, is what I would say. That's what I think she should do. Um, clearly she's not ready to run for president. It's a joke of an idea to even run for president in the first place. Bernie Sanders actually has a chance. Um, he's just as progressive, if not even more progressive. And so I don't think she should resign. I think she should, you know, run for re-election in her seat. Now, some people are saying, oh, the reason why she did that is another tactical move. She was going to lose anyways, and so this way she gets to be like, oh, I'm not running again. 
you know, um, so that's what I think should happen. I don't think she should draw. I don't think she should resign. I think that she should drop out of the presidential campaign and resume being a House member.